So in my last video, I discussed how we can fetch model entity from the uh, remote URL and how we can use view model for MVVM architecture. Uh, today, I want to show you how we can make the 3D object draggable before discussing fetching uh, multiple remote items all at once. Um, so, uh, so I don't want them to like get all summoned in one place and you know look awkward. So as you can see, we have this uh, teapot right here. Let me adjust this a little bit. Looks a little bit awkward because the light isn't getting rendered, um, you know, properly. This is just a simulator bug. So I'm just going to switch scene between kitchen uh, day, and uh, day and night and bam. Now it's now it gets rendered properly. Anyway, um, so what I'm trying to do right now, I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen recording. I'm trying to move this teapot around, but um, it wouldn't bulge. It's because we have to manually set input components for our model entity to know that they are getting tapped or they're getting like a dragged for in, well, in that regard. So uh, we're going to write an extension for a model entity to, well, do that job. So we're going to make a file and then we're going to call it model entity plus helper. And we're going to write the extension here. First, we need to import reality kit. And then we're going to name this function add tappable or make it tappable. And in this function, we're going to basically set input component and then generate a collision shape. So basically what setting input component is that like a basically registering it to well, understand what inputs are. So what we can uh, what we can do here is that self dot components dot set input component. But just setting input component isn't enough because in uh well um computer world uh, for the like a better word, um even though we're seeing an entity, we're basically tapping on an empty space. So we need to generate some kind of collision shape. So our tapping gesture can actually hit something rather than just going through it. So we're just going to say self dot generate collision shape and recursive to true. And then that should be enough. Now that we've made our model entity tappable, we can go back to reality view and then we can set up a gesture. And then we're going to create a drag gesture here gesture and then we can make it target to any entity and then from here we can utilize this unchanged uh, modifier here and then we are going to take that value and then this is where that dragging gesture and like a changing the position will happen and we can grab that entity that we targeted here get it as like a uh, value dot entity and then we're going to change uh, the position right away setting it value dot convert local to value Okay, now that we set up our gesture, but we haven't made this model entity tappable yet, and we're going to do this in our view model level. So we are getting the, uh, what is it, um, model entity here, and then we can just say await model entity tappable. And then we can just feed this right into here. The reason I'm not doing it inside the view level is that view should only be responsible for displaying asset or doing navigation and this kind of uh, business logic should only be dealt inside the view model okay let's build it and see how it looks Okay, now we can drag it around. Uh, that was easy.
Okay, I think I'm going to end my video here. In my next video, I'll discuss how we can fetch multiple assets asynchronously in our view model. And um, sorry about taking forever to post my last video and uh, for the quality. I'll do better from now on. And please like, subscribe if my video helped you in any way. And feel free to drop any comments too. Okay, I'll see you next time then. Bye.